Hi, this is my review of Ravenloft, Monstrous Compendium, Appendices 1 and 2. As many of you know, Ravenloft is a campaign setting for Dungeons and Dragons. There are different versions of it, and this Monstrous Compendium uh, can be used with uh, Bands Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition. Well, Ravenloft is one of my, of my favorite campaign settings. Uh, there, I even uh, reviewed the, um, the Domains of Dread book, if you want to see that review, the link is in the description below. And well, let's get started. Let's talk about the physical quality of the book first. The, well, the illustrations are amazing. The, the, most of them are, are just pretty good, top-notch, with that uh, classic old school, old school feel. And I will be showing some of them uh, as I review the content of the book. The quality of the book itself is its pretty decent considering uh, the many times I've used this book. It's already a bit... Um, it got, it's got some, some creases over here. I don't know if you can see them properly. And it's, it's a soft cover book, but it's um, kept together pretty well. The, the pages haven't fallen apart yet. However, the paper is, star is starting to get a bit yellowish, but the quality of the paper is good and uh, the ink is good as well. And the organization is, is pretty good as well. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about the content of the book. Oh, oh yeah, there is one th thing that could have been better. I remember there, there were some um, typos or um, mistakes. Uh, for example, there's a, an NPC Oh, and just a warning, There's, there are going to be some spoilers in, in this review because I will be talking about some of the NPCs and, and the different monsters here. And there's one NPC, uh, half golem, Desmond LaRouche, right here. Mm. And when you read the background information for this non-player character, uh, you can pretty much tell he's probably neutral good or, or chaotic good in the alignment scale. So he's a pretty decent guy, but here it's, he's listed as chaotic evil. You see chaotic evil, let me see if I can put my, there we go, chaotic evil. And it's really, uh, it's, it's obviously wrong because uh, he's uh, an NPC who protects uh, a forest and he helps people that uh, are defenseless and he avoids confrontation if the player characters um, come face to face with him, he's, going, he's not going to fight them uh, right away. He may even become a sort of ally, so it's obviously a mistake. And well, the content of the book, well, the, there's a foreword explaining the, the changes that, that went through uh, between this version of the book and the former ver version, because there was a, a monstrous compendium, for, or rather a separate appendices for AD&D first edition. But here they made some adjustments uh, to um, adapt the book to the second edition of, of the game. And you get all sorts of um, standard information, like um, the frequency in which the characters are going to encounter these monsters, uh, the type of clima climate or, or terrain that the monster, where, where the characters can find the monster, you also get alignment, armor class, movement, number of attacks, experience value, etc. Everything that has to do with, with encounters. And they also uh, tell you how to, to build an appropriate uh, Ravenloft encounter because Ravenloft has a very distinct uh, flavor. I don't know, it's sometimes like dark medieval and gothic and Victorian in, in many ways. So, for example, if you have a, a random encounter in Ravenloft, uh, the party probably finds a victim of the monster they are tracking down, and the victim is all, the, I don't know, just a big gory mess. Or, or maybe the characters are um, traveling across a dark forest, and they find a, a Vistani, which is, as you many, uh, many of you know, is kind of like a gypsy, and Maybe the Vistani will offer to, to read uh, their fortune by using the cards or, or whatever. And, and she may start, start giving hints to the characters as, you know, you're going to face this terrible monster and, and one of you may actually die and, and creepy stuff like that. They also give you some uh, quick tips on what, or rather like um, 
they talk about what makes uh, an, a rebel of the encounter different from a standard fantasy encounter so for example in, in a standard fantasy encounter the characters may i don't know come face to face with a an orc raiding party so they're going to be oh, oh no those orcs are going to to destroy that village and uh, let's kill them or whatever but in ravenloft when the characters encounter this orc raiding party they're they're going to see the orcs um i don't know waving around banners made out of um the flayed skin uh, that out of their victims and maybe i don't know with lots of, of skulls in their hands and with um, all sorts of, of physical deformities. So Ravenloft has to feel really dark, disturbing, uh, gritty, terrifying. And they talk about that in here. And also the, the storytelling aspect of, of how to integrate these monsters in your adventures. Well, the, the monsters, there are some original monsters, but a lot of them are kind of like tributes or references to different uh, classic movies or, or books of, of terror and, and gothic horror and there's also some sci-fi so for example you have monsters like the Bastellus that feeds on, on nightmares but you also have uh, a monster like um, the doppelganger plant that reminds you of the body snatchers you also have um, uh, a bunch of nightmarish golems like a uh, bone and, do and doll golem that look very uh, disturbing or uh, a uh, mechanical and, and zombie golem there's also the, the grim reaper oh this this monster is really good because he, it, uh, it may seem quite weak at first but with each attack, uh, this monster may actually end up killing the, the character, uh, no matter the, the character's level. In fact, uh, the higher the, the level of the party, th there's a bigger chance that this Grim Reaper may appear when the character is about to die. So it's kind of like, like a pest that is always bothering you, because as long as you are in the demiplane of dread, in, in Ravenloft's setting, you're going to be uh, constantly chased around by this thing if your character is about to die. There are also uh, some uh, were bats and were ravens or all sorts of lycanthropic beasts. Some of these monsters uh, could actually serve as allies. For example, the, the were raven is actually neutral good. This one looks like a reference to, to Jack the Reaper. I remember this this one's being really disturbing because it's the, the Quevari and the Quevari um, are basically nice folk who turn psychotic when there's a full moon. So the characters could be staying at their village and uh, they don't know it but they are falling into a deadly trap. There are also um, evil trans and, and undead trans. This scene reminds me of the of that part in the Evil Dead movie, you know, the the infamous tree rape scene. <laughs> and well, you get uh, similar monsters. Oh, of course, and, and you get a lot of um, of cool vampire, I don't know, archetypes uh, based on on different races. For example, so you have a, a dwarven vampire. Or an elf vampire. Back when vampires were still pretty creepy. So... Because back then, uh, vampires really portrayed that sense of, I don't know, of the, as if they had some kind of in a human mind that they had nothing in common with humans or, or humanoids uh, except their appearance but uh, in their I don't know in their thought processes they were pretty alien these these illustrations are pretty cool as well a wolf wear and a zombie lord and as you can see all the information you need to, to for that character in, in Encounters is, is on the side and additional information is below. 
It's actually pretty easy to understand how to use these monsters, except some creatures like uh, the vampires, they have even two or, or three pages, pages no, just two pages of, of different uh, information on how to, to play them, so that's, that could get a bit um, complex or crunchy. And then you have a, a nice collection of NPCs. I really like this illustration, it's so disturbing, look. And these NPCs could serve as, as main villains or powerful allies for mini campaigns in Ravenloft. You have a, a living brain, and each one of these NPCs uh, comes with uh, their own background, their own story of, of how they turned into those monstrous creatures. You get a, a ghast. And they are usually related to, to the Dark Lords, or they have some, some strong uh, relation or plot-related information uh, based on, on a specific region of the Plane of Dread. This is the, the lady from the illustration before. She, she has been cursed and she needs to replace her head constantly because uh, they kind of like... Um, she needs to replace the heads because they rot away really quickly. And you get different types. There are also is, um, uh, the, the stereotypical um, voodoo priest. All sorts of NPCs. They're all pretty good. Th this one's actually neutral good. It's a uh, it's a good leech. A bard leech. Almost all of them are pretty good and, and pretty scary when handled appropriately. There's even a, a ghost. But there was one NPC that felt, I don't know, less scary than the others. This one, the vampire, uh, Vladimir Lut Lutzig. Because, I don't know, he gets that vibe of, I don't know, totally rad, man, or, or something like that. And that's not really creepy. Of course, uh, a capable dungeon master could create a pretty creepy adventure out of this character's background. But uh, at first, he doesn't seem that... That's scary, although he's pretty powerful. Okay. Oh, there's an old, an old dad. AD and D in the back. Descriptions for dungeon and dragon magazines. Well, let me tell you what I think about this book. This is a pretty good book. It's, it has not just the information to play as or, or use the monsters in your campaign, but it also comes with a lot of tips and, and additional background information so that your characters feel that each monster is very unique, even though it's just an illusion. There are many types of, of similar monsters, but because of the way they are uh, fleshed out and they have that particular Ravenloft uh, flavor and dark themes, uh, each encounter with these monsters is going to feel um, disturbing and, and that it could be the last encounter that the characters face because um, we all, the, all these monsters have, have different um, deadly abilities and special powers that sometimes they don't even allow a saving throw and the NPCs are, are just pretty good they, they're kind of like like campaigns uh, oh sorry, adventure seats for your campaigns so this book, I, I really can't find a negative thing about it. It's just, it's just excellent. It's a pretty good book, and if you like playing in Ravenloft, you should get it. And even if you play, I don't know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons 3.0 or 3.5 or Pathfinder, it's pretty easy to adapt these creatures to your campaign. Even though there are already updated versions of each creature, mm, the background information is pretty good. Well. Thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. See you later.